In this video, we will see the most important test points on an inverter air conditioner electronic board. Point 1. Power supply from the external electrical grid. Power up the electronic board and set the multimeter to AC voltage. Measure before the rectifier bridge or at the input of the rectifier IC. The value obtained should be that of the electrical grid, generally 220 volts of alternating current. Point 2. DC power supply voltage. The rectifier bridge is responsible for converting AC to direct current DC. With the board powered up, measure at the output of the diode bridge or the rectifier IC using the multimeter set to DC voltage. You should obtain a value above 300 volts. Point 3. If the voltage in the previous point is not adequate, disconnect the board and wait a few minutes for the capacitors to discharge. Check each diode of the rectifier bridge. Remember that diodes only allow current to pass in one direction. Replace any damaged diodes or the rectifier bridge if necessary. Point 4. The PEC resistor is used to protect the compressor and other circuit components from excessive current consumption. When current consumption increases, temperature rises, and the PDC resistance also increases, limiting the current and protecting the system. The PDC helps stabilize the current in the circuit, preventing current spikes that could damage the components. To measure the PDC resistance, disconnect the air conditioner and locate the PDC resistor on the board. Set the multimeter to resistance, ohms, Measure the initial resistance and heat the PDC. The resistance should significantly increase with heat and return to its initial value when cooled. Point 5. The contactor should allow the passage of a phase when controlled by 12 volts of direct current, taking control of the load after the initial current has decreased, ensuring efficient system operation. Point 6. The inductor limits the current, filters noise, stores energy, and manages the phase difference between voltage and current, improving the system's efficiency and reliability. To diagnose the inductor, disconnect it and measure its electrical continuity with a multimeter. Point 7. The PFC circuit is crucial for improving energy efficiency, reducing interference, and stabilizing the equipment's operation. Test the output voltage of the PFC circuit. Check the state of the recovery diode and observe the condition of the IGBT transistor. Point 8. The inverter module or intelligent power module, IPM, is responsible for controlling and protecting the power supply to the compressor, managing energy efficiently and controlling the compressor speed. To diagnose the IPM electronic circuit, you can perform the following procedure. 1. Disconnect the equipment from the power supply. Remember that capacitors can store current. Use a multimeter on the DC voltage scale to measure across the capacitors and ensure they are discharged. 2. Locate the IPM electronic circuit. The IPM electronic circuit is covered by heat dissipating fins. Its pins are connected via three independent tracks and an electrical connector to the three compressor pins. 3. Positive power supply. Identify the high voltage positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the positive track from the largest high voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 4. Negative power supply. Identify the negative track from the capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the negative track from the largest high voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 
5. Identify the output points U, V, W. These can be identified by following the tracks, from the compressor connectors to the IPM electronic circuit. 6. Set the multimeter to the diode scale. 7. The IPM electronic circuit is internally composed of six IGBT transistors, each containing a diode, that we will test. Let's start with the integrity test of the first three diodes. A. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the positive input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the red probe to measure the points U, V, W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be around 0.45 volts for each measurement. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin, U, V, W, should yield practically the same reading. Let's proceed with the integrity test of the last three diodes. A. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the negative input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the black probe to measure the points U, V, W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be similar to those obtained previously. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin, U, V, W, should yield practically the same reading. If everything seems fine with the IPM electronic circuit, you can perform the following test. A. Connect the electronic board to the power supply, taking the necessary precautions. B. Set the multimeter to the DC voltage scale at 400 volts. C. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit. D. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the negative power supply of the IPM electronic circuit. E. The power supply value will depend on your electronic board's power supply, expecting values around 150 volts, for a 110 volt supply, and approximately 300 volts for a 220 volt supply. F. If no power appears, the issue with the external electronic board lies in the power supply, and not directly in the IPM electronic circuit. Point 9. Disconnect the compressor from the board and measure the resistance between the pairs of compressor pins with the multimeter set to ohms. All resistance values should be equal.